Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF.com Formulator Race of the Day for Thursday, June the 22nd is race number eight at Belmont Park. We're going seven furlongs on the Widener turf, and let's take a look at this field of optional claiming fillies and mares. It's an intriguing race, Mike Beer, and I want to start off with the number 11. That is Miss Katie May. And Miss Katie May figures to take a good amount of action simply based on the horses she's been against recently. Yeah, I think, yeah, you're right about that. People will see Lady Aurelia, especially from her seasonal debut, I guess, and pay attention to that. I felt like that race, anyway, not that she was going to win. It looked like maybe they were using that race to get here. I mean, she was always off the pace, just racing on at the end. Um, she can do better than that. I do like her as a turf sprinter, Dan, but. I'm just, she's a horse I've followed and I've liked, and I'm getting a little bit tired of her. She just never seems to get there. I, I share the same opinion as you. I liked her race in the Ken Maddie two starts back because mm -hmm. that was a really fast pace, and she was up close, and it's understandable that she got a little bit leg-weary late. And last time out in the Giants' Causeway, she was probably too far back to yeah. really make a dent, and she was running on a little bit. But I thought she had her chances in races like the Unzip Me and the Christy Cat, and I thought she should have punched it in, yeah. and she didn't do it. So Price ultimately has to be your guide. She's four and one on the morning line, and considering she faced three next out winners, she's going to yeah. take money, so I'm hoping to beat her. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. I, she's the kind of horse I feel like I would use, at least defensively, in a bet like the pick four, but I don't really want to bet uh, better to win in this race. Let's see what the time form U.S. pace projector has in store for race number eight. We're not expecting a fast pace. Wesley Ward has two of the entrants in here, and the one and the 12, and both of them are expected to be forward, including Spelker, who's won her last two races and now steps up in class. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose, you know, if the pace isn't that competitive and she gets out there, it could, she could go a long way. I just... I just don't see how she's good enough to beat this field. Never been a big fan of La Montagna. Maybe she's a little bit better than I've given her credit for. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I love her at the seven, though. Yeah, I don't like her at the seven either. And I agree with you. I've never thought that she was that good. Maybe I've underestimated her a little bit, but she really, I mean, it feels like she's in a really tough spot here over this distance. Let's have a look at a formulator fact for the number two, Lady Alexandra. Remember, free formulator past performance is available on the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com. It's Chad Brown. It's got to be a good fact. Third off the layoff in Turks turf sprints over the past three years, almost 30%, 283 ROI. I don't know. I didn't love her win two starts back against older horses. I thought she got a good trip as the favorite last time out in the Soaring Softly. She's 6-1 to one on the line. I guess she's value considering she's so lightly raced and has some upside, but I don't need her in if this spot. she's 6-1, I'm not going to argue with anybody who wants it, but I, I agree with you. Her Soaring Softly, to me, just wasn't that good a performance. I liked her win two starts back just fine, but that was not a good field that she beat, and her ginger brew was okay as well against better horses. I don't know. She's just that, that kind of horse, so I won't be surprised if she does well in this race. I just don't know how good she is. A horse I do want to use a little bit in any kind of multiple race wagers is the number four, Peru, who came off a little bit of a layoff last time out for Christophe Clement, and I think she was just stymied by a lack of pace. That was a race where Ultimate Holiday was something like 35 to 1 and just stole it on the front end, and Peru didn't break very very well. She was all the way at the back by herself. Yeah. She came with a wide bid. And she was running a little bit late. She's been solid in her three starts in North America. I'm just worried about that time form U.S. pace projector. I agree with you. She could be compromised once again, but I agree with everything else that you said about her. I don't know what the deal was. And I actually liked her a lot in that last race and bet her last time because I liked her two starts at Gulfstream. I thought she ran well both times. I don't know how you could have made that horse wire in that field at a million to one, but that's what happened. She tried in that race. She can do better than that. I feel like, in a lot of ways, this might be a better spot for her. Another horse I want to use in the pit fours or any sort of multiple race bed is the five spectacular me. Just a hard-hitting seven-year-old. Yeah. She's been first or second in 28 of 50 lifetime starts. I mean, in her last start last year as a six-year-old, she pretty much dominated that claiming crown distaff dash. Yeah. She got a nice in-out trip, but she just pounded that field late. I thought she ran okay last time out in the blue spot. Sparkler stakes at Monmouth. A similar trip. She finished ahead of two next out winners. One of them, Linda Rice's Night Delight, returned to score with yeah. a 90 buyer. Yeah, hers is okay. I want, I worry a little bit about seven for her. Okay. She, her. All of her most recent races are at five or five and a half. She's been seven before. She's run fine at seven before. She's actually run fine at seven and a half before. She's a good, hard trying horse. I'm a little worried about the seven. We have to talk about the number eight Browse, a first time turf runner going out for Shug McGay. This horse has a lot of turf in her yeah. category. Yeah, this, it would be the least surprising thing in the world to see her move up on turf. And her, actually, her dirt form is not bad. Um, there are a lot of you know, sort of wet tracks in there. I don't really feel like she likes a wet track. I mean, she's caught a couple of those, and she disappointed a little bit last time. But that Pico Uno is a little bit of an underrated New York bred. 
it would be the least surprising thing in the world to me to see her step up her game on turf. A lot of angles here. This horse was fairly well regarded as a three-year-old filly for Shug. It's yeah. now her third start back. She is kin to three turf winners, including the grade one stakes winner, imagining the multiple stakes place turf runner reflecting, and perhaps most more importantly, she can be close to the pace. Yeah, that's right. All those things sort of point you in her direction. I wonder what kind of price she'll be in here. I almost felt like when I the first time I went through it, that she would be one of those Shug horses with Patty B who might get a little bit lost in the shelf and if she does she's a dangerous horse the nine is chorus line and chorus line returns to the turf we haven't seen her on grass since her second lifetime start she's a bit of a reach 30 to 1 on the morning line she's, uh, dressed up a little bit off of her recent good-looking dirt form she had a lot of things go her way on the inner dirt over the winter um, I'd be surprised if she could beat this field. what about the number 10 most beautiful going out for a very good trainer and Tommy Proctor coming off a race at Pimlico last time out where she didn't change leads and I wonder if she mm. just didn't really like that given the ground. Yeah. I think she's more of a firm turf filly, but the fact remains, she hasn't won in a very long time. Yeah, I would be willing to give her that last one for sure, for all the reasons you mentioned. The, the problem is you have to start going back through other races and decide if you think she's good enough. I wonder about it a little bit. Let's take a look at our top selections for the Thursday Formulator Race of the Day. You're going for a complete stranger, and that's the European import, the number six booze, who goes out for a very good turf sprint trainer, and yeah. Alan Goldberg, and look at the company line. She's been facing really good horses. Yeah, really good horses. Off the lay, I have to worry about that. It's interesting to sort of look at all of her races um, in France. I mean, they ran her nine times as a two-year-old. They were not skipping races with her, and she ran really well in a lot of those. I liked her uh, that group two race two starts back where she missed by it. She had no excuse in there. She got a good trip, but she really ran in that race and the allowance went right before that. She wanted a lot easier than the next margin uh, would lead you to believe. I think there's some ability here. She gets Lasix. As you mentioned, Goldberg's really good with these turf sprinters. And it's just the kind of race, Dan, there are so many different ways to go. Um, it's a wide open kind of race. I just sort of wanted the new face in here because I've been betting and losing money on a lot of these horses over the past you, six months. Are you concerned about the potential lack of pace in here? Because yeah. as we know, a lot of these Europeans sometimes are a little bit slow be coming out of the gate and they give themselves too much to do. I mean, everything you said about Booz, you, you mentioned all of her merits, the horses she's been in against, Thunder Snow and Spainberg yeah. and some really big names overseas, but it's so the lack of pace worry. It worries me a little bit. I will just say the, the races uh, last October and September, those two good efforts at the end of last year, she was never that far away from the pace. It's a little bit different over there. They don't go as fast, but uh, she showed there that she can keep in range anyway. You and I are big fans of the Seven Rumble Down. I love that horse. It's a bit surprising that it's been so long since she's won a race. It's been about two years right now. I thought her last race was okay at this level. She had her chance at it. She got beat by a nose. Uh, she's the kind of mare that needs a little bit of pace, but she's also the kind of mare that basically shows up each yeah. and every time. I'm expecting good, good effort. Six to one on the morning line seems fair for the seven Rumble Doll, and I'm going to use Rumble yeah. Doll in here along with the five and the four in multiple races. Yeah, you know I'll be using her as well. I keep betting her every time. She had a real trip two starts back when Take These Chains beat her, and then I... I liked her a lot last time. I still don't know how she didn't win that race. Mid-stretch, I thought for sure she was getting up, and she didn't. I'm starting to get a little tight of her because I keep losing money on her, but I have to use her in here. Fun turf sprint is the formulator race of the day on Thursday. And if you're playing the Belmont card from home, please sign up to DRF Bets. If you do, you'll immediately have access to a $300 sign-up bonus and lots of handicapping goodies. Very easy. All you have to do, head on over to drfbets.com slash v. I P. Approximate post time for the Thursday formulator race of the day, the eighth, is at 5:13 Eastern. Best of luck.